I've gotten really excited about working with botanical direct printing, meaning with leaves and flowers, and an assortment of other surface design processes that are part of my repertoire, and working on large pieces of watercolor paper, sometimes with a fabric substrate attached to it. And the issue was how to steam those larger format pieces of paper flat rather than rolling them. Some people like to roll up their bundles. I totally get that. This is another alternative. So I wanted to walk you through the steps of what I have. This is basically a commercial pan. It's about four inches deep and the dimensions are about 18 by, uh, let's see, 14 by 18. So right now this is sitting on the stove. You see it covers two burners and I have acquired a white plastic coated I guess it's more maybe it's more an epoxy coated rack and that rack we trimmed the legs so that it could sit down inside the commercial sheet pan uh, so there are some tools involved if you'd like to make one of these yourself you're gonna have to have some chops when it comes to a saw that'll cut off the legs or getting a deeper pan so there's a little wiggling around in terms of getting all the logistics right I put the pan on the stove and I put that wire rack in it and then I use these propylene cutting boards and they've been cut so that they fit inside the commercial pan with about a half inch around all of the edges so that the steam from the boiling water underneath can penetrate the pieces of paper the compositions that I'm going to lay onto this piece of cutting board when I do this system I don't have to wrap with string, I have no waste, I don't have any cardboard waste. Sometimes we bundle the, um, the plant matter and the watercolor paper or fabric, we bundle it together and then wrap it up in cardboard and string. And of course that's an efficient way to go about this, but in the case of the system I'm showing you, there isn't any of that waste. So I have two of these cutting boards. I build my compositions, meaning I lay out my watercolor paper and I put the plant various botanical material down on top of the watercolor paper and then I have another cutting board and I put that cutting board on top. So you can see these are down recessed inside the sheet pan and if I'd had more layers of, of um, combinations of, of plants and paper I could raise it still slightly above the level that it is right now and have room for more. Now, the whole key to direct botanical printing is based on three things. It's based on the steam and the steam being able to really get to the bundles because that's what activates the various chemicals in the material that you're using, whether it's the, the literal tannin in the plant or whether it's something that you've applied physically to the plant before you made your sandwich. Um, so steaming is really important and timing is critical. I always steam two hours. But the other thing that either makes or breaks this is that it needs to be weighted evenly in such a way that there's direct contact, con contact across the bundle. And so I use these bacon weights. You can buy these online and I have all the resources listed at the end of this short tutorial. I found these at a grocery store in San Antonio, but they're widely available and you can see the size there. So I put those three bacon weights down on top of the cutting board and that weights all of everything that's packed in between the two cutting boards evenly and it is the key to getting a nice clean direct print. Now I don't have a slide of this but this is important to note. The condensation from the pan that will go on top can ruin the prints because it creates so much condensation when you're steaming for two hours that the paper can become absolutely soaked, which would be fine if I wanted the effect of boiling my bundles, but I don't. I want the clean printing that comes with the, just the right amount of steam and timing and the direct contact. And so when I have this pan set up in the way that you see right now, before I put the top on, I get a big old bath towel and I tuck the bath towel over the bacon presses and down along the sides. The towel doesn't touch the water that's boiling underneath, but it covers the entire surface here and just gets tucked along the edges in order to keep the condensation off of the prints and in the towel. So there you can see I have another commercial pan exactly the same size. These come in different depths and so I could make an even 
taller bundle if I desired. I could make it wider. Of course you're going to be limited by the size of the pans that you're using, but I have one about half size that will do eight and a half by ten or, or thereabouts prints and it's equally efficient. So I put this top over everything that you just saw on the other slide and I steam for two hours. I don't turn the temperature of the burners down because I want that water to be boiling consistently the whole time. If I turn the temperature down to medium, the water doesn't boil quite as efficiently and that can affect the uh, quality of the print that you're creating. So you want to keep the temperature up all the time. If in doubt about your water level, set the timer and at one hour take the lid off, take off the towel and check the water level to be sure that the pan doesn't burn dry because if the pan boils dry it can catch the paper that you have inside on fire and that would not be a fun day. So double check the amount of water that you have in the pan until you know for sure that you can go the whole two hours and if you can't go two hours then add more water halfway through pouring it gently down the side of the pan so that you don't get the cutting boards or the bundles inside additionally wet. I thought I'd end with just an example of one of the pieces I created recently. This is an altar. It's about 15-16 uh, inches high. It's about 4 inches deep and I used the leftover pieces of my botanical direct printing to make these 3D objects because it allows me to use the parts that turned out really great on a print maybe on a print that was less than perfect. So the background is one piece that's cut to fit inside the altar and so it was one of my most favorite prints from the batch that I did using the system that I just described to you. So you see what you can do with the paper and you see what you can do when you work with this larger format and you're able to steam flat. Here are links to the supplies and of course these are not exhaustive links. You can find them other places but if you check out these links at least you have an idea of what you're looking for and what you need to buy in order to put together the kind of steamer that you just saw here. Good luck. Check in with me. Let me know how it goes. Show me pictures of your work. I love to see what people are working on.